Bienvenidos, muchachos. Welcome to the quick hitter version of Mike Wise Show. I'm joined by my producer, Bruce Bernstein. Hola, Mike. Our featured discussion this week, Bruce. Forty Pippin. <laughs> he's, he's resurrected the story of him and Michael in his new book, Unguarded, with my friend Michael Arkish, who I believe is going to be on the Catch and Shoot show. Um, and I just, you, you know, I, like, I, I, I'm tired of the last dance talk, for one, because as much as being part of it was fun, um, I feel like I've already relived it. But Scotty went off on Michael. Your thoughts? First of all, I'm going to cut Scotty a little bit of slack because the man's previous year has been filled with very sad, you know, kind of news. I mean, look, he lost. Yeah, his I son. saw that. I don't. Did yeah. that get in the book at all? I'm not sure, but I mean, it, it very well might have. His son Antron passed away in April at the age of 26. And who knows what, I mean, look, you were talking about, you know, dearly departed folks a few minutes ago, who knows what kind of, you know, PTSD type of effect that can have on a person. That said, Scotty's been bitter about Michael for a really long time. So, I mean, it may have been exacerbated by his, you know, grief and I'm not yeah. a shrink, so I don't want to try and get too deeply into that. But look, Scotty, um, back in the day i mean look we all remember the last dance and we remember the terrible contract that he signed and you know he he was underpaid for a long time although towards the end of his career he signed a very lucrative contract when he was well past his prime so you know while he may feel bitter about a lot of things in many ways you know that second contract that he got after he was done with the bulls could have you know somewhat offset the money that he lost but that said i mean look he uh scotty doesn't feel like he got his due from from michael he he's but but you know what scotty there's only one michael you right. know that's well, the way it goes I, everybody everybody's look i mean everybody has their own take on this and being close to it and having covered those guys and he's gotten to know scotty a little i mean but not to the point where were tight like me and Shaquille or somebody like but Scotty was one of these guys who um there was always he never had the social graces of Michael do you know where he just like M Michael could be running a con on you but he could charm the heck out of you he wouldn't even use words correctly because but because it was Michael Jordan using them he, when he would go quite naturally we would go oh my god Michael told us quite naturally and it was sort of like we were so enamored by all Jordan was, especially if he paid attention to you. And there is a magnetism about the guy. I mean, I remember being at the Burroughs Center in Chicago during the height of the Bulls uh, dynasty. And if Michael Jordan was in, uh, surrounded by a scrum of 100 reporters, and he often was, and he looked at you to answer your question, oh, my God, it was like, it was you and Michael in the room together. It wasn't anybody else. And so, so I get it. Um, you know, you're living in that shadow. Everybody's a lot of people because of their leanings are saying, shut up, Scotty. You were lucky to have played with what many consider to be the greatest player of all time. I have a diff, slightly different take. I think Scotty was a different guy. And I even saw a kind of a caustic interview with him in the New York Times this week. Um, where he just, he, he, he answered, the, he didn't like the reporter. And I didn't think the reporter, uh, the guy who did the Zoom with him did a great job. Um, the, the interesting thing about Scotty is there is a lot more to him, but you have to almost draw it out of him. You know, he, he'll give you the narrative of the standoffish guy if you want, and, it, and, he, and you piss him off. But he's also a guy that, you know, he has some really interesting thoughts. And my, my take on it is, you know, not, not that Scotty's right in slamming Michael. It's his opinion. He can say whatever he wants. My opinion is, um, let's be clear. Everybody says Scotty Pippen was nothing and he never won anything without Michael Jordan. You know what Michael Jordan won without Scotty Pippen? Zero, my friend. Zero. So, so it was a one-two banana. And the top banana was Michael and everybody knew it. And Scotty was the second banana. They know the Bulls don't win those championships without Scottie Pippen clogging the defensive lanes and, you know, sliding over to defenders and 
uh, knocking away deflections like nobody thought he could, and some of the big shots and some of the big rebounds. You know, he was all, uh, Scotty Pippen to this day has the perfect basketball body. If I could have a basketball body, I mean, man, he had the long arms. He was so sinewy. He had, you know, and yeah, he came up from a different route than Michael Jordan did. I never had any problem with Scotty Pippen going off. And, you know, and, and, you know, Phil Jackson might have not been racist taking him out that time. And I would never say, I would never agree with Scotty. And he's all also walked back those comments, but look, um, however that play went down, you don't take Scotty Pippen, your best player. And, you know, Ku coach wins the game. Who cares? They still didn't go to the championship that year. You took, you removed your best player from the court. No coach in his right mind does that. And so, so I could see how Scotty felt disrespected on that Ku coach play from, was it what would have been 95 94 i believe it was 94, the first it okay. was the first the year the Knicks went to the finals i think it Near was, the Knicks, it was yeah. that okay year. so so whatever you know like look you were part of a dynasty um you didn't get paid till later but he's right to some extent and he brings up some really interesting points i don't know if it's ever been confirmed that michael got 10 million um i wouldn't be surprised he was the editorial director he and his people were the editorial directors of his own documentary. Can you imagine if Muhammad Ali got to be the director of his own documentary? Uh, he, you would have thought he was a saint. Um, he was a, but he was I saint. liked Ken Burns's <laughs> portrayal better because he he gave you the full Ali, and everybody in Ali's camp knows that's who the guy was, and they had no problem with it. So, so yeah, I, you know, a person that a person should never have control editorial control over their own documentary because it doesn't give the real picture. Well, it was more of a, de- a business decision than it was an editorial decision. But see, yeah. the thing about Scotty, Scotty, you know, people maybe don't really remember Scotty was on that original dream team. So, you know, that was the greatest team ever put together. Scotty Pippen was on it. And not only was he on it, he was a major participant. I had some limited dealings with Scotty when I was at ESPN. He came to us for a while as an NBA analyst on some of the ABC games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to give Scotty some credit here because when he first started out doing, you know, analysis, you know, Scotty wasn't always the most polished when it came to how he would speak. You know, he had, you know, he's from, you know, a rural area and I'm not putting down rural people, but just simply a lot of times we speak the way people we grew up with spoke. I mean, when I grew up in the yeah. Massachusetts area, I had this wicked bad Boston accent, which I, you know, was able to lose, you know, uh, along the way by not living there. But Scotty, you, to you me, parked your car in the Harvard yard. That's right. And there's nothing no, worse than a fake well, Boston sorry. accent. There is nothing worse than a fake. Not, I mean, there's just not. Anyway, yeah. um, so so Scotty, I'm going to I'm going to give Scotty some credit here, because when he first started out, I mean, he sounded, you know, he didn't sound so good, but he really worked on it. And, and towards the end of his TV time, when he was working with Rachel Nichols on the jump, he was so much better. I mean, he always yeah. was able to make good points, but his delivery became much more polished. And he sounded, you know, he, he still sounded like Scotty, but he just sounded better he was a better version of scotty so um you know he's got the chip on his shoulder no question about it um but you know look when it 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 doesn't always go our way i mean you and i have both been you know second fiddle to people that maybe we wish we hadn't been second fiddle to that's the way it goes that's life right i mean who who have i been second fiddle to i have no who, who i can't think of anybody um, oh, maybe Wilbon, Kornheiser, Sally Jenkins, and Thomas Boswell when I was a columnist at the Washington Post. I was like, I, I batted ninth on Murderer's Row. You're right. Um, no, and, I, and maybe I, at the New York Times when Maureen Dowd was there and Frank Rich and every other sports columnist, like our good friend Harvey Ariton. And 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 um, maybe maybe everywhere I've been, you're right. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> doesn't doesn't mean that you're not a Hall of Fame caliber journalist. It just doesn't always, you know. Look, sometimes we think more of ourselves than the rest of the world thinks of us. Although I think extremely highly of you, Mike. And in in spite of that, you know, hat that you had on before, I 
give you great credibility. We're going to see that hat in the promo, by the way. Where that's that thing is going back on for the promo. I, I, the I don't know. I don't know why this whole pod and like you know we put some of them like the Stern one and Genie Bus on the YouTube. I don't know why that the, every week I'm not on YouTube. My face, my mannerisms. That could sell this thing a lot more than the content I'm giving. You want to know something? When we yeah. decide which of today's topics is going to be our quick hitter, yeah. that's going on YouTube. So I want you to put your best sartorial foot forward when we do that. If you'd like to hear more, check out the full version of the Mike Wise Show from Pure Hoops Media. You can also see the video version of the quick hitter on the Pure Hoops Media YouTube channel. Adios. Adios. Hasta luego, amigos.